Hello, this is James Reese. You're back here again uh, at Razorthorn with Razorwire to find out some more about information security in the industry in general. Today we're going to be talking about, I don't know, what are we talking about? The lack of security staff in the industry. Ah, yes, the lack of security staff in the industry. Okay, um, this has been a bit of a problem for a while now. Um, there are very few highly qualified information security people in the industry at the moment and it's it's a real serious problem actually there's there's a lot of newcomers who want to get into it a lot of people are seeing the high wages that a lot of infosec professionals are getting these days and this is this is kind of very much from the fact that uh, Infosec in general has, has become a lot more important over the last couple of years than it feasibly used to be. So obviously as demand increases, the price increases, wages increase in this case, um, and you get a lot more people who want to get into it. Which is great and will be great in say five to ten years when those newcomers into the game um, have had the experience that they need, they've decided where they want to go with their career, you know, I mean, more pen testers, more infosec analysts, security operations analysts. There's a million different ways you can go in this game, as we've already discussed. But um, experienced infosec people are kind of hard to find at the moment. Um, and when you do find them, they they tend to demand quite a high price, so you do pay a premium. Um, especially at the moment, you know. Um, Obviously, with the things the way they are in kind of 2020, um, we're just reaching the end of 2020. We're in our second lockdown at the moment, as of the the time of the recording of this video, um, and we've seen a hell of a lot of of various different people in various different industries going through some quite significant redundancies. Um, one of those is actually weirdly enough information security even though there's there's quite a good market for infosec people um, because of the way things have been going there's been a lot of people losing their jobs you know maybe people have a extensive amounts of additional staff than what they think they needed um, whatever that may be um, there's a sudden glut of uh, young infosec people who are out in the market at the moment so any job coming out you're getting sort of 200, 300 applicants for um, because people are a little bit on the desperate side. But before all of the problems that 2021 have, uh, 2020, sorry, has had uh, and leading into 2021, I think you're going to see the demand for, for, for InfoSec kind of start to rise back up again. More jobs will become available as companies feel that they're becoming more stable. Um, but they're going to find that, that a, a lot of those infosec people are going to going to be asking for quite significant either wage increases or sort of quite significant wages for for you know kind of lower end parts of 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 infosec because there's just not enough people in the game. Um, as I said, in ten years' time, I think this is going to be very different. It will stabilize. It will normalize way way back when IT started to, to move into business quite aggressively you know um, there was a, a massive shortage of IT staff I mean we're going back many years now but any kind of emerging industry will have this problem for you guys to take advantage of that for those of you who are training up I think it's very important to look probably at, at not what is available technologically speaking today or the way that business runs today but look more closely at how things are going to be in the future you know as i've mentioned possibly in some of the some of the other media that i've released you know we're going very much from a kind of centralized working environment to a very decentralized working environment there's a lot more people now working from um, their home offices from their their kitchen tables you know, all these lockdowns that we're experiencing at the moment mean a lot more people are working from home. And I think a lot of businesses are, are finding significant cash advantage to having staff working from home. So the way that we apply security going forward is going to be very different 
to how it was at the beginning of 2020 or before um, the 2020 problems. Um, so when you're looking at your career, look at where security is going and, and decide a course of action based off of that because it's going to be important going forward. Um, the more you specialise in things maybe like cryptocurrency, AI, securing cloud environments, the, the kind of more modern forms of, of IT, if you're going into cyber security, then um, you're going to be, have a much better leg up than maybe some of the people who've been in it for a while and have kind of specialised more in, in very much more centralised environments. That's not to say they won't adapt. A lot of InfoSec people are very, very adaptable um, and they will move accordingly. But have some thought on where you want to go and what you want to do um, and where the market is going as well because it will it will mean you'll get a good job at the end of it you'll get a good career path um, and you know that's very much going to be consistent throughout your entire career having to adapt to new ways to apply security um, is quite key and important so learning those in the early days, those kind of basic security countermeasures, um, ways of working, uh, however you want to kind of look at the market. Um, once you get that baseline, you can pretty much adapt and apply it wherever you go. You know, um, if you want to be a pen tester, there's a basic set of skills and then obviously the advanced set of skills. If you want to get into governance, governance is an interesting one because we're going through quite significant changes um, in compliance and regulations at the moment. Um, a lot of governments and a lot of institutions are starting to see a significant change in their opinions of security. Whereas before it was maybe loosely applied in the early days, so many big issues have occurred like the BA hacks, the Marriott hacks, the Target hacks. Um, that what we've seen is quite a significant rise in, in regulation and compliance. So we've got things like PCI DSS compliance, you've got ISO 27001 compliance. These have been around for quite a while, but they're becoming a lot more prominent. And you're fi I'm finding a lot more compliance regulations are springing up based off of some of those early compliance requirements. So if you're going into governance, look at compliance, look at where it's going, keep up to, up to scratch with it. Um, because again there's going to be a lot more people looking for people with skills in that compliance space for the governance aspects learn how to do um, policies procedures how to apply them um, how to fit in with a culture you know um, you do that and in governance you're gonna you're gonna have a pretty good time of it um, but what we really need to do is to, to build up the information security capability uh, with the younger generations because they're going to be the ones that are going to be managing, managing it going forwards. You know, when I'm, I'm 42 now, you know, when I retire, um, it's going to be a whole new set of InfoSec people looking after things. So I think it's important also if you're looking to get into InfoSec at the moment, um, to fill that kind of skills gap, then get some mentorship if you can from some of the older timers in the game. Um, they can really kind of help you build yourself to understand business, to understand how security protects the business first, um, all the aspects around governance and, and what we've done to build things up to where they are now. Um, because we've got some good experience um, in what we're doing, but things are going to be very different by the time you're in control, you know, say 10 years down the line. I get a lot of people asking me, you know, what kind of milestones is there when it comes to getting into InfoSec? Um, very much there's, there's this kind of five year initial beginning, you know, for the first five years of your career, um, you should really kind of goal and, and aim for building your baseline security knowledge. Get to know governance, get to know cyber security, get to know physical security, get as 
wide a breadth of experience as you can um, in pretty much everything. Then once you hit that kind of five year stage, um, you're considered to be, you know, an expert or at least, you know, a professional in the field, especially if you've got something like a CISM or a CISP under your belt, um, which makes you infinitely more marketable and more likely to, to be able to move jobs and to get to, to, to do some of the more interesting stuff, you know. Um, yeah, you know, five years I would say is, is, is where you kind of pass that danger mark that if you, if you lose your job that you might, you know, you might find it a little bit more difficult getting something else, you know. Um, once you hit 10 years, that's pretty much it really. You know, you can, you can pretty much move into any space that you really want to. Um, obviously by that 10 year mark, um, we normally specialize in specific areas. So I specialized in, in consultancy, compliance and governance. Um, I still have quite a strong cybersecurity knowledge, um, but then that's predominantly what I kind of grew into my career from. So I started out in IT support, um, then moved into cybersecurity. It wasn't called cybersecurity back then, it was called IT security, you know. Um, developed myself down that path and then moved on to kind of compliance and governance and, and you know, CISO as a service and all the rest of it afterwards. Um, but I still have some good, strong knowledge. I'm not quite as current as I used to be. I used to be very current, you know, go back 10 years, but now, you know, don't get me wrong, I can still build, build a mean firewall rule set when I feel the need to, but, you know, normally I just kind of leave that to the more specialized people these days. Um, other than that, it's just a case of, of persevering. You know, once you get over that 10 year mark, you'll have no problems. You'll have no problems getting another another job in this particular environment. Maybe you will want to, to become a consultant. Maybe you will decide that you want to go freelancer or if contracting is still around at that point, you know, with R35 coming in next year, I'm a bit dubious about what the contracting market's going to look like, but you still have a very strong freelance and, and you know, PAYE employee kind of, kind of market at the moment, um, all things considered. So what can we do going forward? Well, you know, as you kind of progress in your career, maybe if you hit that 10 year mark, look at mentoring other people, you know, the younger generation who are coming into it at that point, you know, educate them in the kind of things that you've been mentored in so that we don't lose that knowledge, so we don't lose that background. Um, that way, when they get into things in 20 years time or 30 years time, um, everything that you've, you know, you've learned from us and we've learned from our predecessors is, is not lost. Um, and it will mean that, that you've got a, a fantastic baseline for your career going forward. Um, a bit rambly this one, it's, it's a bit of a tough subject. Um, <clears throat> You know, we're going over what it means to be an InfoSec person, but we, we need to also look at where the market is at the moment. And, and at the moment, it's it's very high, all things considered. Um, one tip I will give, as you progress through your career, um, don't make too many big leaps, okay? If you get offered a position that's maybe two or three levels higher than the current position you're in, have a serious think about whether or not you want to do that. I have had a few people I've known in the past who've gone from being security analysts to, to getting a CISO position. Um, I wouldn't recommend that because you lose out on a lot of knowledge along the way. Um, and I've seen some serious problems come out at the end of it when you know, the company that's employing you is thinking that they're getting a full blown CISO with a certain set of skills, but because you haven't developed those skills, you end up in a, in a pretty uncomfortable situation. So, you know, when you're planning out your career to fill this skills gap, um, seriously consider how you wanna do that, where you wanna go and the timelines that you want to do it as well. My One of my old mentors, John Kerr, hello John if you're watching, um, he was fantastic and when I first started working with him um, and he started mentoring me, he said to me, have a 25 year plan, 
And at the time I thought, 25 years, well, I don't know what I'm going to be doing in 20 years, let alone 25 years. Um, but I sat down with him, we went through it, and I, I did this plan, and, and, you know, what I found was, although I didn't necessarily follow everything that was in my plan 20 odd years ago, um, I still haven't reached the end of my 25 year plan, I'd point out, um, I'm not that old yet, uh, but what I found is, is, is it was a very good way of kind of guiding me through those darker times where, you know, I wanted to move on, I mean, Back in 2007, 2008, when I started Razorthorn, I'd, I'd just been made redundant from the previous place that I'd worked. Um, and for those of you who are around in 2007, 2008, there was a, a quite a big cash crisis going on. Um, a big economic crisis over in the States, uh, came over to here in the UK and kind of spread around the world. And there was a lot of people made redundant in a lot of different positions and back then InfoSec was quite an easy one to, to make cost savings on because people thought that IT departments could do the job of information security or cyber security or however you want to term it these days. Um, that really isn't the case, you know, IT people are great, they're there to do, you know, to keep things running, to keep the IT working and, and all the rest of it and they are good at some levels of security, things like AV and the more cyber security stuff, the firewalling, that kind of thing. But they don't have the same skill sets that we do. Um, so it was, it, was, it was great to have that 25 year plan so I could relook at it from time to time, amend it and change it and what have you and, and move forward with, with that career path. So make sure you do that. Um, and if you don't want to do 25 years, do 10 years, you know, do five years. As long as you're doing something, you've got to have a goal in mind in order really to reach it. Otherwise, you're just kind of wandering around in the dark um, thinking, well, I want a better career in IT or, in, sorry, in information security. Um, and you've got no direction. You, you don't know where to go. So, so build that plan. Um, John was very, very adamant that, that I knew where I was going and that I, I would work towards that at all times. He was very supportive. Um, and I credit a lot of where I am today through, through the mentorship that he gave. Um, and he came from a, you know, a much, he'd been in information security for, for much longer than I had at the time. So, you know, find that mentor, let them provide you with the guidance you need in order to build your career into what you want it to be. So, I've rambled on enough now, I'm going to shut up. Um, so thank you for attending. If you like what we've said, then please feel free to subscribe. Uh, click the little bell down to down at the bottom to get the, uh, get the notifications. If you've got any comments or you want me to cover anything, then please feel free to leave a comment or email us and we'll be more than happy to cover that in another session. Thank you very much. This is James Reese. Speak to you soon.